The new Siri remote is well designed and a definite improvement for its ease of use. In this video, I'll show you how to take advantage of all the cool features of the new Siri remote to get the best Apple TV 4K experience. These features will allow you to enhance your viewing experience fully. But first, let's talk briefly about the new Siri remote and the featured buttons. Alongside its elegant and sharp design, with a solid aluminum body, you can't miss its new centerpiece, the click pad, which is basically a circular controller with directional buttons that you can touch. Many users appreciate the return of button-based directional controls. This allows users to quickly scroll through a list or play certain Apple Arcade games without removing the touchpad functionality. For those like me, who got the new Apple TV, this remote is included, but it's also available separately for $59 if you own an older model. With the new remote, you get a circular, touch-sensitive D-pad with a clickable touchpad in the middle of your remote. In addition, Apple has introduced the new scrub function. This method of navigation feels as comfortable as the old iPod click wheel and is a quick and easy way to get where you want. The previous menu button has been renamed to back button and its function remains the same as before. A power button has been added to the upper right. In the lower left corner is a new mute button. Siri has been moved to the right edge, placing it high but still within easy reach. So using it is similar to holding the side button on an iPhone. The button placement is more natural and makes it less likely to be pressed on accident. Now, let's go over the features of the new remote so you can get the most out of your Apple TV. If you just purchased the remote by itself to pair with an older Apple TV, or if your Siri remote becomes disconnected, you'll need to manually pair it with the Apple TV. There can only be one Apple TV paired at a time with the Siri remote. All remotes that have been paired with the same device are automatically unpaired when a new recent remote is paired. To start, set the Siri remote between 3 to 4 inches away from the Apple TV and point it at the front. Next, press and hold the back button and the volume up button for 2 seconds. When the Siri remote is successfully paired, an on-screen message will appear. On the bottom left, we have the back button. It may be confusing to those who have the original Siri remote given its lack of a menu button. Usually, this button lets you navigate back to the Apple TV's interface or display playback controls. So Apple ditched the menu label instead of keeping it and it now serves as a permanent back button. The back button lets you navigate your Apple TV 4K or HD. Pressing it once takes you back one step. You can use it to return to the home screen when inside an app, for example, by holding it down. The back button is concave that helps to quickly identify it without having to look at the remote. Unlike the original remote, the updated remote doesn't have a giant touchpad. Instead, we have a touch-sensitive clickpad. To open an app or to change playback settings while watching a TV show, press the middle circle of the clickpad. By pressing the outer circle, you can more precisely move through the long list of items, or you can skip forward or rewind in 10-second segments. With the touch controls, you can navigate through your Netflix library by swiping across the whole pad. Tab to select is not currently available. You'll still need to be required to press the interior of the pad to select an item. In the remote and devices sections of the settings menu, Apple does allow you to disable the touchpad on the click pad if you don't want it. With the click pad, you can still swipe left or right to rewind or fast forward through your video quickly. However, if you want to precisely get to a certain time for your favorite scene, you can also use the jog wheel. To pause whatever you're watching, you can either use the play pause button on the click pad or press the middle of it. Now rest your thumb on the outer edge of the click pad and a circle, the jog wheel, will show up. You can now move your thumb in either clockwise or counterclockwise direction to scrub through the video. Having tried the new technique a few times, the trick to getting the remote to recognize you is first pausing the show, and then leaving your thumb on the ring for a few seconds. On the timeline you'll see a small circle with a white dot when the Apple TV is ready to start scrubbing through the video. The click pad itself also has a couple of adjustment options that you can change. In the settings app, you can adjust how sensitive the touch buttons are for your liking. Go to the settings, remotes and devices, touch surface tracking, and try out the different options. The touchpad feature can be completely disabled if you don't like using that feature. Go to the settings, remotes and devices, clickpad. Press the select button to alternate between click and touch or click only. 
There are times when you can't just understand a bit of dialogue. Siri can help with that. Hold down the microphone button to bring up Siri and ask, what did they say? Siri will then rewind a little and play the scene with subtitles, which disappears after a while. It's definitely a cool feature. A couple of the neatest features of Lite are the ones that let you play around with your TV iOS and customize the TV's home screen, as well as let you control it all through one remote control. Before I get into my favorite ones so far, make sure you leave a comment and let us know what your favorite feature is. Also, if you've gotten value out of this video so far, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. The power button on the top is a brand new addition and it does exactly what you'd expect. Siri Remote now includes this new feature. By pressing the button, you can turn your Apple TV on or off. Without even having to set anything up or dial in a code, the remote was able to do this right from the start. In case the remote doesn't control all the connected devices, then double check you have the settings enabled by going to Settings, Remotes and Devices, and scrolling down to the Home Theater Control section. Then turn on Control TV and Receiver and set the volume control to Auto. Like on your iPhone or iPad, you can customize the home screen on your Apple TV just as easily. You can arrange the order of your favorite apps on the home screen by dragging them to the top of the list. You can change the order of apps on the home screen and place your favorite apps in the top row. If you want to rearrange your apps, then select and hold the center of the click pad until you see it jiggle. Drag and drop the app to a new location on the home screen. When you're finished changing the arrangement, just press the click pad. And here's a tip. You can bring up the option menu when an app is jiggling. This gives you the options to delete and place apps in folders. To delete an app, choose the app you want to delete, then hold the center of the click pad for a few seconds until it begins to jiggle. Click on the play pause button to view more options, then click delete. When an app is deleted, the data is also deleted. It's possible to download any app you've purchased from the Apple Store again for free, but data will not be restored. To create folders, you can do the same thing. Just bring up the menu and click on Move to Folder. You can even rename the folder by moving up to the name and clicking on the center button. In many ways, Apple TV does the same thing as an iPhone or an iPad's multitasking feature. You can quickly switch between different apps on an Apple TV without going back to the home screen. Or whenever an app isn't working properly, you can force it to close, then reopen it on the home screen. On the Siri remote, press the TV button twice quickly. There are windows on the screen for each open application. In App Switching View, navigate to the different app in the center of the screen, then do either of the following. Press the center of the click pad to switch to the highlighted app. Swipe up on the click pad or touch surface to stop the highlighted app. Without changing apps, you can leave the app switching view by pressing the back button. Like all devices, the remote has a built-in battery. A low battery can affect a device's interaction with the remote. You can see how much battery power your remote has left by going to Settings, Remotes and Devices, Remote on the Apple TV. An image on the page shows how much battery life is left and the battery percentage. The remote is charged by a lightning cable, just like the Apple Magic Keyboard, and mouse. With durability and a sleeker design, and with more functionality, this is an excellent upgrade to consider. In case you missed it, you can watch our previous video if you're considering buying the new Apple TV 4K. And that's everything you need to know about the new Siri remote so that you can enjoy the most of your new Apple TV. With all that said, I'd love to hear what you think about the new Siri remote, and if you think it's a winner or a flop. If you've enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to stay updated on all our latest videos, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.